Welcome to the second part of my Project Zomboid Tips tutorial video where I try to help you guys with all the things I know in regards to surviving the zombie apocalypse in Project Zomboid. Today the focus is going to be on a variety of things including some combat tips that I found out are super effective with fighting larger hordes as well as a build that some would argue is OP. But first in the last tips video I discussed watching TV to learn some skills passably in the first 8 days of the zombie apocalypse. I also mentioned not to speed up time when doing it or risk the chance that you may lose skill points. It occurred to me that I've never actually tested it. So here's what I did. I took two unemployed individuals and plopped them down in front of the TV. On one I didn't speed up time at all, on the other we just fast forwarded time the entire time. So was there a difference? The answer? was a resounding no and if you are curious exactly how high you can go with watching TV as an unemployed oaf in the zombie apocalypse, well here you are. Now obviously your XP will vary according to your occupation and traits and this experience demonstrated that even I, Drunk on Life, can fall to bad information every once in a while. Also in the first part of this series I mentioned the importance of using weapons in which you have a skilled XP modifier in. I'm going to elaborate on this in a little bit and actually show you a little strategy that is super effective at least for now. Remember Project Zomboid is still in beta meaning things can change at any minute and probably will but for now it works very well. In this example I'm taking a short order cook that gives me a bonus for the short blade skill as well as a bonus in maintenance. I'm also taking the hiker and herbalist traits because they give me a buff on foraging trapping and I can identify poisonous berries from the fresh ones but that's beside the point. The plan is to not rely on looted weapons and instead rely on stone knives as my primary way of defending myself against the zombie hordes. To make a stone knife or a stone axe for that matter you need one branch, one chip stone and a rip sheet. You can forge for materials with everything but the uh, rip sheet which you can easily rip up clothes off the bodies of dead zombies. You can also take them off of drapes as well. After that go on a zombie clearing rampage. This works on a couple levels. First while you and the zombies are in close contact the knife swings are extremely fast and punchy and once you figure out the timing you'll get a feel for exactly when too close is too close. Secondly, short blade comes with a negligible stamina use which essentially means that as long as you aren't running or over encumbered you can virtually fight all day without feeling exerted. I think the stamina part is important to understand. You could do this with stone axes but you'll eventually get worn down quicker using them and will have to take rest breaks so stamina is an issue with most other weapons other than the uh, short blade. Your skill level as long as you start proficient in short blade will skyrocket very quickly. A lot of this has to do with how Zomboid awards uh, experience. So every time you successfully hit a zombie you get skill points based on the damage done and since a short blade is quick you can quickly rack up experience with each jab. Increasing maintenance is important as well because initially the durability of your handcrafted weapons will be very very low. Every time you hit a zombie with your weapon it will, it will roll whether your weapon is damaged from the hit. If it isn't damaged experience gets points get given to maintenance. And once again because a stone knife is so quick and punchy that means a lot of chances to improve your maintenance. So here's a real life example of what is possible using this method as a short order cook. One day 7 hours in and I'm already a level 3 proficiency in short blade and a level 2 maintenance with uh, 102 zombies killed. Plus it essentially gives me a reason to forge or early game and I no longer have to rely on finding weapons in the world. Neat. So how to take on large hordes. I'm pretty aggressive as a zomboid player which means I take a lot of chances that probably aren't really good choices. That said there are a couple things I do when taking on a large horde. So the first tip would be to make the most of your environment. What I mean by that is that if you have cars or other obstacles use them to separate the slower zombies from the pack. Uh, wheel around the backside and just peel them off and take them down one by one. Repeat this process until all are dead. Another strategy is to loop around a house and pick off the stragglers uh, knocking the ones that got distracted at windows and doors. This strategy is highly effective as long as you don't run into another group as you are running the loop. One thing you, I can say from experience it usually isn't the zombies you can see that will get you killed. Usually it's the ones you don't see which is why it's always advisable not to get tunnel vision while fighting. It's always a good idea to peer to your sides and behind you every couple seconds to avoid an ambush. Should a zombie catch you by surprise from behind chances are good it's an eternal good night for you. So let's say you are on an open piece of road with no obstacles and a horde is between you and something you want. How do you tackle that scenario? 
The short answer is making small tight circles around the horde, striking the lead zombies and any stragglers as you loop around the circle. The circle, the size of the circle depends largely on zombie population in the immediate area, by the way. This tactic is reliant on you not attracting other groups nearby and preventing the size of the horde from growing. It also helps if you have an intimate knowledge of exactly how close is too close with the weapon of choice. The reason this is strategy is so effective is largely based on the two zombie states in the game. You have shamblers, which are like Romero type zombies and fast shamblers. And both of them have two states each as well. A wandering state, which is slower and a faster locked on state when they uh, get within a range of you. By moving a large group around in a circle, you're basically separating the wandering slower state zombies from the pack, enough to get a strike or two before the horde catches up. For smaller groups, you can use a zigzag strategy to get the zombies to go from three zombies side by side, which could put you at a great risk of fighting, to getting them to form a conga line with one behind the other to make it super easy to finish off. Of course, none of this will matter if you don't understand the things that will ultimately get you killed. Moodles! Moodles are basically the barometer of how your character is feeling in the game, and there are two of these Moodles in particular that if they pop up, while you were in combat, it would be highly advisable to step away for a second, or even better, just call it a day. The two Moodles are the exotic, Exerted Moodle and the Tired Moodle. Of the two, Exerted Moodle is probably the one Moodle you should pay closest attention to because if you ignore it, you'll get more and more fatigued as time wears on. Being even mildly exerted will increase the number of hits needed to dispatch zombies, which also means you get even more exerted. So it's exponential. A little side note on exertion. Exertion typically happens because either you are carrying too much weight on you or you're using a heavy weapon in combat for too long of a time frame. If you aren't encumbered, you can lose the exertion moodle sometimes by briefly stepping away from combat. However, if you are encumbered, the exertion moodle will not go away and will actually increase your exertion until you become less encumbered or rest. You can remedy exertion if you happen to find ginseng, which will incrementally alleviate exertion, and it's found by foraging. Tiredness is the second Moodle I'd like to address as this one also makes combat less effective and affects vision as well. You can remedy this through the use of vitamins, although I must warn you, you will be popping lots of vitamins for a little relief. Coffee and tea works a lot better if you have any handy. Other Moodles and how to manage them are the Pain Moodles which are mitigated by painkillers, the panic moodle, which can be managed with beta blockers, although the more panicked you are, the more likely you will be able to push a zombie down to the ground. The stress moodle, which also affect damage and accuracy. Read a book, smoke a cigarette, etc, etc. The unhappiness moodle, which can be mitigated by books as well as antidepressants. And one final thought on the pain moodle. The location of the pain matters. If you are scratched or lacerated on your right arm, your attacks will be slower and more laborious. So if it happens to you, it may be a good idea to find a place to rest. And finally, while we've been dabbling a bit in combat tips, I should say the gunplay in Project Zomboid is highly underrated and can be super effective with clearing out sections of an area if you know what you are doing. But first things first, understand that if your character has little experience with gunplay, then you should save shooting small arms like a pistol until you are more comfortable using it. I'd probably recommend level 3 plus with aiming. Secondly, sound carries far in this game. To understand how far, I asked my good friend and Project Zomboid gun expert, Ghoul King, and this is what he said. A pistol covers 150 tiles, rifles covers 170 tiles, and shotguns cover 200 tiles. To give you a graphic of exactly what 200 tiles looks like, here you go. So you are interested in gunplay but have zero experience in aiming, what do you do? My first recommendation is to lean in hard on the shotgun. You improve your aim skill with every shot, you successfully hit a zombie, and because a shotgun will successfully hit more zombies each time, your aiming skill will ramp up super fast. But then, 200 tiles, right? How do you use a shotgun without becoming lunch? First, you want to find as many shotgun shells as you can. You can find these in warehouses, sheds, and of course, armories. I recommend at least 100 shells, preferably 200, before you attempt gunplay. Secondly, you want an area in which it will be likely you won't get surrounded, like a place you've cleared out behind you. Now go ahead and unleash your wrath. As more zombies appear, wrap them into a giant ball so you can hit more with each shot. Reload and repeat the process until all or most zombies are dead. Oh, I almost forgot, you're going to want to have beta blockers on you as well because panic decreases accuracy and you'll want to be as accurate as possible. And one more thing, you can practice loading and reloading your weapon in the comfort of your safe house to increase your reloading skill. 
Well, that does it for this episode. If you like this video, don't forget that thumbs up for the algorithm. You can also subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and leave me a comment of or two or three on your way out. Until next time, this is Drunk on Life, signing off.